Hey guys, welcome to our Thor Love and Thunder review, the sequel, the third, uh, no, the fourth Thor film. This one uh, from a returning director, uh, Taika Watiti. Uh, and I was so excited to see this film because I got to say Thor Ragnarok is one of, if not one of my, my favorite Marvel uh, MCU film. I just love uh, Taika's uh, take on Thor. Uh, the comedy is perfect, all these kinds of things. And that was a 10 out of 10 film for me. Uh, so this one had a lot to live up to. Um, and then before its release, uh, we saw that uh, J Jane Foster's getting involved. She's the new Thor. Uh, you know, and, and uh, Natalie Portman's returning to the role. Uh, and then you get the announcement of Christian Bale being the villain. So it's really building up for me. Um, slightly before release, I'm seeing kind of uh, some news stories that it's like it's mixed. It's not very good. So what's the truth? Like, how is the film after having seen it? I'm going to let the boys go first. What did you guys think of Thor Love and Thunder? I can see how uh, this is a mixed bag. For me, obviously, I'm still going to enjoy Ragnarok way better than this one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> For this, I came in pretty average. I didn't expect too much. It's still an enjoyable film, but I just feel like it overused its comedy. Yeah. A little bit too much yeah. as I get wore out its welcome for me. Yeah. Like, I'm glad like, that you noticed was, the same thing. I was like, look, it's funny the first time, but why do we mm -hmm. get to do it again and again and again throughout <laughs> the film? Yeah. And uh, I think Christian Bale did an amazing job as yes. Gore. Yes. He's but one of the best he, parts. He didn't, yeah, but I felt like he was underutilized, though. They didn't. They God didn't damn, use him Joe, a lot. you literally just spoke everything that I was going to say. Maybe so, I, didn't. I was like, mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What I, do you think, Alex? Still a good film, though. Same thing. I, I enjoyed this one. I love Thor Ragnarok. Um, I, I love the, how they just completely like course corrected like how bad the the first two Thor ones, and it was just like this amazing bright spot, literally bright spot in, in the Marvel Cinematic mm. Universe. This one's big. It's bright. It returns with the humor. I think some of the running there's at least one, if not two, too many running gags that they yeah. really overutilize. Uh, and then they do you something gotta like screaming goats quite a bit. Yeah, and the the writing kind of goes to Crazy Town a little bit, um, mm -hmm. where you know Taika Waititi has always done that. And I know you're, oh, he always does that. Well, he does, mm -hmm. but he goes even step be yes. uh, beyond that. It's like where they took the training wheel, or they they let him go unrestricted. You know uh, yeah, I mean? to the point where to probably the, we should have reined him in. To the detriment of, of the film where it just feels like this is more direct, especially certain parts, like more directed to kids. Mm -hmm. And we have Gore the fucking God Butcher. Christian mm -hmm. Bale acting his ass off. Yes. He was incredible. There is no God Butchering at all in this movie. There's apparently hours on the cutting room floor mm -hmm. uh, that they just cut out. And I think this movie needs at least 30 more minutes of mm -hmm. Christian Bale yes. being a villain in this movie rather than feeling mm -hmm. like a kind of like a side piece that kind of shows up at the very end. Yeah, I've, I've heard that as well, that there are more Christian Bale scenes that were cut from the film. Uh, absolutely a tragedy because uh, well, we think his take on it now, it's, it is, it's over the top. It's, it's, cynical. it's, it's <laughs> very, uh, you know, sinister and uh, kind of... Um, Quirky to see, you know, Christian Bale, good guy Christian Bale, uh, turn into kind of a, a Joker esque kind of uh, character. With a believable motive. Yeah. With a believable motive. Yeah, no, I loved his performance. Uh, he really, uh, you know, buoyed the film here. And I think the film actually takes kind of a while to really. Uh, get going. I think the third act it found its way, and uh, and you're having a pretty good third act. But when you consider that Thor Ragnarok started uh, really good within the first five minutes, and then maintain that all the way through with an excellent third act, it is a, um, a disappointing uh, thing to try to match up <coughs> these two films. Uh, you know. But it is not a bad film at all. No. You can have fun. So my critic brain says, damn, this one just didn't hit you know, yeah. the Ragnarok levels. But my uh, fan brain and, and MCU brain and, and, and Thor uh, brain says that it's a fun ride that you should go out and see. Um, however, it does some – it makes some creative choices with a lot of the characters and some that I don't – really like nor do i really care about nor do i want to see play out in future films you know what i mean uh and we can talk about some of that 
in spoilers. There are uh, some cameos, real life cameos of real life related characters. Of course, Thor, Thor's uh, or Chris Hemsworth's family uh, makes a lot of cameos in this film. And uh, and then we also get the gods. Uh, so you've got a very funny uh, Russell Crowe as uh, Zeus. Javert. You've seen him in, in the trailer. Um, and uh, it's kind of surprising the route that they, they went there. And, um, and the resolution to that was, uh, was really, really interesting. So um, there is two after credit scenes that you should stick uh, uh, to watching because uh, they're both worth it. Uh, extending the story. But this time, I, I agree with both Joe and Alex that I think the pacing was off, the jokes, right? So this is Taika, you know, what TT, and he does a lot of jokes. Unfortunately, they just weren't as funny uh, this time around as the other ones. And like you're saying, they would repeat jokes over and over. Some that would work would be like, uh, Stormbringer, they made they made an inanimate object somehow funny. Jealous. Getting I thought that was jealousy. good like two times, yeah, and there's I like there's like five of them. I'm like after a while, I'm like, oh man, I don't. Same, I don't same know. thing with the goats. Yeah. Uh, the screaming goats are hilarious the first time they show up, and then also when they slam into something later on. But every time they're on the screen, they're screaming their heads off like five, six times. Uh, so uh, and and. Even Korg is not quite uh, given enough time or anything to shine as well. He just kind of seems like a guy that just like follows Thor's around, Thor around, and uh, so mainly this was to drive the plot of uh, Gore and uh, Jane Foster, and um, both feel rushed, uh, so to speak. Uh, Christian Bale doesn't get enough time, and Jane Foster, that thing, it just kind of feels like it comes out of nowhere, um, and. I know it's in the comics, so it doesn't really come out of nowhere. But it's resol It's it's uh, shown. Like I actually expected the film to just like Jane would just show up and she's Thor, and they would kind of explain it on later. No, it shows the creation of Jane. It goes into it. She gets a scene with her little friend from you know that, that's shown up. I forget this lady's name. Uh, you've seen her in the. It's Darcy, right? Darcy, yeah. What what series was she in? She was in WandaVision. Uh, WandaVision, yeah. So she gets there. So so I guess it makes sense. They like had to show some of that so they can fit her in as well. Um, but ultimately, it was a little disappointing. But now, but there are uh, some really fun, bright spots in the movie, especially when they go into the shadow realm, which is this. Uh, it, it kind of saps all the color, so the cinematography is really cool. Uh, the fight and, and visuals are really cool. I think Ta Taika Waititi is still really good at that, especially... I know gore is supposed to look completely different. It's supposed to look more like a tentacle monster. But honestly, I like the way Christian Bale looks in this and his take on it, uh, as well as the shadow monsters. Now, this... Blade is really important in the comics. This blade, and, and it does end up differing in this film, at least from what I've seen. Uh, this this blade is supposed to be like from the, this the first symbiote and Noel Kroll or Noel or something like that, the symbiote god. Uh, but it doesn't seem related to any of that. Instead, it's it's kind of slightly different uh more shadow they 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 do more shadow effects than they do symbiotes there are some monsters that are created so that gore can have an army so that thor can then raise an army to fight initially he wants to raise an army of uh, gods which seems pretty cool uh instead he raised an army of we'll talk about that in the spoilers uh an army of asgardians but uh yeah, I kind of thought that was kind of dumb, uh, but that's just me. <laughs> Anyways, if it, it maybe a film uh, for kids, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, oh, 100 percent agree. Okay, I so agree with that. let's go ahead and let's go into some uh, fi uh, final verdicts, and uh, and then we can talk a lot of spoilers <laughs> in a big old section. Uh, I think everyone did a great job acting their asses off in this one. Uh, Natalie Portman did a great job, uh, especially uh, Christian Bell. Mm -hmm. But again, I feel like. Christian Bell was the only one taking his role pretty serious. And even when I was like getting into it, I was like, oh shit, this is going to get pretty tense. They start using jokes and kind of takes me out. I'm like, well. <sighs> Tonally off. Yeah. You know, the fact it's that. It's like it ruined it. I was yeah. like, look, it's, it's going from the medicine, uh, just intense or just. Just anything that it tried to build up got yeah, We're talking about the death of gods here. Yeah. yeah. 
so all that stuff and the battles between them kind of felt lackluster to mm-hmm. me. Didn't really grab me or anything Are you like that. Talking about Thor and Gore. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of yeah. a letdown for me. So Bummer. yeah. Other than that, there's I did also like yeah, uh, be be aware that uh, in, in the comics, uh, you know, hmm. Jane has cancer, and so if you are affected by cancer or have a loved one in cancer, this film can and will trigger you. Um, but in, in, even in this sense, uh, they play a lot of it for emotion, and it feels like there should be more emotion in the film uh, given the subject matter, right? Or given you know the whole loved ones passing away and dying and things like that, then, then you know... Uh, because Gore is dealing with, you know, he's mad at the gods because his daughter is passed away, and that's why he's kind of killing all the gods. So yeah, it, uh, it it's weighty subject matter, but yet it doesn't feel as weighty as it needs to be because it's constantly doing the mile a minute jokes, exactly, and they're just not that funny this time around, so they're hard to excuse. Yeah, exactly with that. But other than that, like I like the visuals, I like the soundtrack. It's still '80s. Love the '80s. But overall, I'm going to give this a seven. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, as far as the soundtrack goes, I kind of disagree. Like, I'm not a big fan. I'm not a big Guns N' Roses guy. No. There's tons of Guns N' Roses and <laughs> songs. I love Dio. I love the Rainbow in the Dark, but that's in the credits. So I'm like, damn. <laughs> a lot of Guns N' Roses. All right. What, what do you think, Alex? Uh, I, th- this movie's all over the place. I imagine that he wanted to make a three-hour long movie, and then what they did is they had to cut it down, and this is the result. I mean, it feels like what we were shown is an incomplete experience. I mean, there's every little in- individual storyline is missing something, whether mm-hmm. it, Jane is the one that you pointed out there's a lot missing. There's a ton of stuff from Gore missing. Um, they've, I, uh, they've revealed that in a lot of other uh, you know, interviews and extra content. So we know that this film can go up to four hours. I, right? A long time. Yeah. It's only two hours and five minutes. Why? Why is this the shortest of the MCU films? Yeah, it, one it, of the shortest. It, it, it kind of reminds me a little bit of you know when we go over the DC side where there's something kind of cobbled together at the end, and you can tell there's really important things missing. Um, I, I love Taika Waititi. I think his his sense of humor most of the time just completely resonates with me. So a lot of the stuff here was working. There's a lot of real like this is a movie that you can watch a bunch of times if you want to, and there's a lot of little jokes here or there like Korg's rock god is sitting on a throne of scissors because rock beats scissors. Uh, I missed and it. then like there's, uh, he's sitting on like what the Game of Thrones. I mean, there's I a lot of that. there's a lot of little things in there that are like really kind of funny, especially with what happens at Korg at the very end. I got Dwayne. I got and that so one. like there's there's a lot of really funny things in there. But then there's a lot of he plays things like there's these running gags that just they stopped being funny. And then we we I I do feel that the the emotionally that he, there were some strong moments there. There's some really great Thor and Jane stuff there. That um, I think you know was did really well, especially mm-hmm. for like a, a Marvel film. Um, the action I don't like at all. Mm. I think that if I, I, I was getting like Venom vibes because you're fighting shadow monsters, and when you're fighting yeah, shadow I never monster, liked the shadow monster stuff. But you know, you just can't look at like when you. It's yeah. like what am I seeing? I'm seeing like a bunch of trash bags and a hammer see. thrown at them or an axe can't thrown see. at them, and yeah. you just you don't get you don't feel the weight of anything. That's so you happening. have to rely on the battle between Gore and Thor. Did you like that? Yeah, but that's it's five minutes long at the very end of the movie, mm-hmm. and so the issue is we have a lot of fights with the shadow monsters. We're doing things there, so it's hard to show off how incredible the cinematography is yeah. if we're not seeing a lot of things. Yeah, we do get another battle sequence towards the beginning of the film. Forgot to mention the Guardians of the Galaxy segment. Yeah, Did you like that. That they got a war going on there does a little I think you've seen it a little John Claude uh throw throwback there. Yeah, he That's he goes fun. he goes he does some really crazy things like he does in other movies and I thought that that was going to be we're going to do the crazy things at the beginning and then we're going to get serious especially yeah, with the subject matter. Exactly. But he went crazy throughout this entire film. Mm, yeah. And so I don't think that this movie is anywhere near as good as Thor Ragnarok. I'm going between a 6 or 7. I like this movie, but I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with a seven. I and that's me being kind because I love. I, I'm always kind on comic shit because I I'm a kid like the, the, the comic yeah. books and I love this shit. So I'm yeah. gonna give a very biased yeah. seven. I assumed Alex was going with a six. <laughs> I am between a six and a seven as well. I love Thor Ragnarok and I actually like this film too. It's just not near that. It's a little messier. The tone is completely off. The jokes were less funny. Some of the creative choices are choices that I didn't really like. Um, but 
when it's working. There's a great scene with Christian Bale and the kids. It's just creepy as fuck. He's like taunting and talking to the kids. Uh, Christian Bale really, you know, makes this work. I like some of the Guardians of the Galaxy stuff at the beginning. That's fun. It's Journeyman Thor. It's weird. I actually uh, saw a picture uh, that Taika Waititi had said that he wanted to make this Thor less likable or something. It's like, well, but when why were there jokes a thousand jokes a minute? Like you were to uh, Thor Love and Thunder director Taika Waititi wanted to make a version of the Asgardian guard that fans wouldn't really want to see. Why would you want to make a Thor that you wouldn't really want to see? I guess we you already kinda... did. They got Thor one and two. Yeah, exactly. We we already had that version of Thor, and you know, going back to that Thor in this kind of does regress to is. You know, the dude bro is funny, but, like, the joke is getting a little old. It's time to get a little bit more serious now. And they do give Thor something that will definitely make him grow up in the future, but it's like, I don't know if I want that direction. And it's a Thor will return at the end of the credits, whether it's in his own movie or as cameos. If it's his own movie, I'm not really sure I'm excited to see that film and where they take it next. Uh, so I'm gonna go with a. Um, I'm gonna go with a seven as well. I'm gonna give. Uh, I'm gonna curve up here, and <laughs> I'm gonna say just so that you understand, you do need to go out and see it. Okay, watch it, uh, support it, and and then let us know. It's just we've seen the highs of highs uh, from the MCU, from Taika Waititi, from Chris Hemsworth. Uh, and the Thor universe, and uh, this just isn't quite it. Though, I do like it. Now, where do you think this one fits in overall in the MCU? I, I like it better than Thor Dark World. That's the one everybody says is garbage. This Correct. is better than that. Yes. Uh, do you like it better? And you know what? I was way too kind to the Eternals. I don't really remember what I gave it. I think I gave it a 7 or an I 8. I like this one better than Eternals. I like this one better than the Eternals. So I, I need to go back and re-review Eternals. I don't think I like Eternals. Yeah, I, don't yeah. mind. I can't remember. We got to write this shit down at this point because it's there's so <laughs> many knows. movies. It's, you put it's hard a, you to put, remember. Well, then when you get like 40 movies deep, you're like, oh, all right. Well, I gave this one of this, and I gave this one of this, and you're like, wait a minute, I gave I gave wait that, that one was way too high compared right. to all of the other ones. Because you get better perspective. Well, sometimes there's a lot more beer at the you know. Ah, <laughs> <so. laughs> that's true. Anyways, go out and see it. It's a good time. Your mileage though will vary, yeah. especially if you're looking for something a little bit more serious, a little bit more. Uh, with gravity and emotion. This one is just a good time, and I wish the jokes would have landed a little bit better. Anyways, uh, stick with us, because we are going into the spoilers. There's a lot to talk about here, and exactly <coughs> why some of the elements didn't work. We will see you on the next Angry Joe Show. Bye, guys. <laughs>